and a scientist in Dia Devo in 2009. And uh, he is having the vast experience in his subject. And uh, another panelist is Dr. D. Ramakrishna Garu, Professor, University College of Engineering, Usmani University, who did his PhD in Electronics and Communication from Usmani University. He supervised around uh, 25 UG and 60 PG students. And uh, uh, right now, he is having eight PhD scholars currently with him. Our moderator, Sri E. Brahma Redigaru, Chairman, Institution of Engineers, Telangana State Center, Hyderabad, who did his MTech in Microwave Engineering from Arabad University. They are with us in this webinar. I, with this opening remarks, I request Sri Karnal Kumar Garu, Honorary Secretary, Kothagodam Local Center, to take over the further proceedings as per the agenda. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is a privilege to uh, we are conducting a second uh, webinar in the local center Kottagudam after the, you have taken the uh, as a uh, chairman, Sri Honorable Chairman of the this local center, Sri Janaki Ramegaru, under his leadership. We are successfully going to the second webinar is online. It is uh, under the electronic division. Uh, I would like to uh, privilege to introduce my today moderator, Sri Hana Sri B. Brahma Redigaru, the chairman of E, Telangana State Center. Uh, Sri Brahma Redigaru graduated in 1984 from the, the Institute of Engineers India in Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering branch. He did his MTech in Microwave Engineering from the Allahabad Central University and PG Diploma in Computer Science of Hyderabad Central University and also hold the professional qualification like uh, CAIIB and MBA Banking and Finance. He served in Indian Air Force for one and a half decades in a uh, radar systems and missiles. He was a member of the IAF te uh, technical team and the radar innovation centers of the electronics SPA Italy. He served as vice president in uh, Toshiba America MRA Incorporation, San Francisco, USA. He served as a director of technical supports in Digital India at New Delhi. He headed the Institute of Engineers as a secretary and director general CEO. He also served in various capacities in banking and finance sectors for two decades. Presently, the chairman IE, Telanga State Center. Uh, thank you, sir. We are expecting as a moderate for the this session. Uh, I also privileged to introducing the uh, the panelist uh, one today, uh, Sri Shamala Rao uh, Gurukapelli. Uh, Sri uh, has completed his bachelor degree from the SVH College of Engineering, Acharya Nagarjuna University in 2006. He completed his MPEC from the IIT Kharagpur in RF and microwave engineering in the year 2008. Later, he worked as an RF design engineer at uh, SI2 Microsystems Bangalore in the area of the RF wireless associated technology from September 2008 to June 2009. Later, he joined as a scientist in a DRDO in June 2009. To till date, he worked with the Indian Navy for a period of two years at Goa Navy Segments. He presently working at a Defense Electronic Research Laboratory that is a part of DRDO Hyderabad. His present area of working is on various microwave front ends, down converters, up converters required for the tree services and paramilitary forces from the last 10 years. He's a member of the various design review committees for DRDO in India. And also as a privilege to introducing the panelist to uh, Professor and Dr. D. Ramakrishna Garu, uh, Department of ECE, University College of Engineering, Autonomous, Usman University, Hyderabad. Uh, Dr. Ramakrishna received his Bachelor of Technology B.Tech in the Electronic and Communication Engineering from the Sri Krishna Devaraya University, Anantapuram, Andhra Pradesh, India, and obtained his Master of Engineering and a Doctor of Philosophy in Electronic and Communication Engineering from Usman University, Hyderabad, Telangana, India. He joined as an Assistant Professor in the Department of ECE, University College of Engineering, Usman University, in the year 2009. Presently, he is working as a professor and chairperson, board of studies for the department of ECE, Usman University, and also serving as the director of the Center for Excellence in Microwave Engineering, University College of Engineering, Usman University. He served as a co-convener of Telangana State Postgraduate Engineering Common Entry Test, that is the 2022, as a convener. Uh, he also served as a chairperson, board of the studies for the department of ECE, University College of Engineering, Usman University, from the March 2017 to 2019. He was, uh, has taught at several undergraduate and graduate courses in communication engineering area and has supervised nearly 25 UG and 60 PG students projects 
in the area of RF and microwave communication systems. Currently, he guided eight PhD scholars at Usman University. He successfully completed the sponsored research projects in the area of RF and microwave engineering and published six to five research papers in the international journals, conference proceedings. His research area is interested including the multifunctional antennas, antenna systems, and the microwave and millimeter wave integrated circuits. He is a life membership of the Institute of Engineers, IE, Institute of Engineers of Electronics and Telecoms Engineers, Indian Society for Technical Education, Indian Society for System of for Science and Engineering, Institute of Smart Structures and Systems, and member of Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, USA. He served as a secretary and treasurer for the MTT, AP, EMC societies, joint chapter for the IEEE, Hyderabad section from January 2013 to 2016. Sir, thank you, sir. And now I am handing the sessions to moderator, sir. Uh, uh, please start with the panelist one uh, today. Uh, topic of the uh, recent trends in, in RF and microwave communication systems. Brahmanity Garu. Yeah, Namaste, <coughs> Sri Professor uh, Sri Karan Kumar Garu. Thank you for. Uh, Giving the opportunity to moderate the um, and thanks to all the members and chairman of Janakiram or of Kottagodam local centers. And also, I welcome both the panelists, Thank you, sir. Uh, engineer Shamal Rao Garu, scientist D of DLR, uh, DLRL, DRDO, and uh, Dr. D. Ramakrishna Garu, professor of ECE department and University College of Engineering and Usmani invest. <clears throat> now the question is, uh, whether it is they are presenting something or uh, directly asking questions and answers. What is the modest CEO of design, design uh, Karan Kumar Garu? Karan Kumar Garu. Sir, actually the panelist one is, sir, sir. Panelist one is uh, present, present uh, presentation started, sir. But, but uh, then we will, uh, they will do presentation. Then the questions and answers, then moderate the things, and then questions and answers. That is the procedure we follow normally. But what is your design? Whether presentation is there, uh, Shamar Rao, sir? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Presentation. Yes, sir. He is ready to giving, sir. He is ready okay. to giving. After okay. panelist one, you can ask some questions. I will then invite to do after one. You can. After they are giving presentation, then we'll go for questions. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Now I request. Yes, okay. Sir. Uh, I request. Dr. Samuel Rao Garu, scientist D, DLRL, DRDO. Sir, kindly, as a pan, uh, the panelist number one, to kindly present your uh, views, sir, on the latest trends in the radio frequency and microwave communication systems. And uh, if you permit, I will moderate in between. Otherwise, at the end of the his speech only, at the end of his presentation, I would like to moderate, sir. So it is according to their convenience. Uh, Samuel Rao, sir, please, uh, you can go ahead with the presentation. Are you gone? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, myself, Shamal Rao, Guru Bali. Working as a scientist in uh, Defense Electronics Research Laboratory, uh, as a laboratory working on electronic warfare uh, from Defense Research and Development Organization from Hyderabad. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Brahmariti sir and uh, Janigram sir and uh, Indian Institute, uh, all other uh, members who are all involved in conducting the webinar. Uh, and uh, I thank uh, giving an opportunity to talk and uh, share my experiences. Uh, from the last 15 years. 
uh, today my talk is about uh, microwave receivers and transmitters uh, before going to microwave receivers and transmitters i would like to give a small brief on uh, these are all uh, yeah these are all my uh, presentation layout uh, just I would like to give a small brief on uh, micro spectrum uh, where around the uh, real time applications is going to use after that uh, transmission lines transmission lines are very important uh, area where we have to understand clearly to uh, in implement in uh, real time applications and uh, what are the types of micro circuits pcbs and all where what the, what kind of circuits are useful for what kind of applications and uh, uh, scattering matrix and uh, parameters what are all the parameters uh, as a component level and uh, if you're going to uh, uh, put all these components in a system level how what kind of impacts will come and all the things uh, that will be a uh, very really important area with the scattering matrix and uh, measurement of scattering parameters and uh, impedance matching uh, which are all a very important uh, topic uh, at uh, microwave level uh, for uh, maximum power transmission and uh, to avoid losses and uh, after all these uh, basic concepts of covering on uh, micro uh, area uh, what are the basic components required for uh, for a uh, uh, generation of or design of any receiver or transmitter and after that uh, key important receiver parameters i am going to discuss about and after that uh, uh, tunable uh, types of micro receivers uh, what are all the types of uh, receivers are uh, existing and uh, what are the differences and advantages and disadvantages i will discuss later and uh, a few modules i'm uh, going to show developed at uh, dlrl and uh, general block diagram of micro transmitter these are all uh, covering today coming to the electromagnetic spectrum uh, as are all uh, we are all know we are using it uh, so many mobile communications and all the things if you see uh, am broadcasting frequencies are starting from kilo h and slowly it is increasing the up to uh, fm broadcast is from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz and vhf and 54 to 72 megahertz and uh, uh, gps generally we will use for location uh, gps location you know that is at uh, 1.5754 uh, gigahertz this is 1575.4 uh, uh, megahertz and uh, regular users, we are doing it everywhere. We will see that uh, microwave events. We will uh, just use the, for the uh, heating of uh, so many components, the puffs and all the things. What is the application involved in that? That is called microwave events. So microwave oven frequency is 2.45 gigahertz. And uh, uh, other things are uh, uh, ultra wideband radio and all the things. And uh, coming to the applications, and uh, this is the wavelength pattern. From where and all uh, the real-time frequency uses is existing in the world. So this is from uh, long wave radio. It is starting from uh, 3 into 10 power 5, uh, this one, and uh, in meters. And this is, if you see, the generic, uh, uh, all the mobile communications, everything in the microwaves area. This is the area where most of the applications are occupied. That's why. Uh, and it is uh, uh, means reasonable cost application where we can develop few systems which are all required for commercial and uh, defense applications. And uh, these things are, this is occupied from uh, 3 into 10 power 8, means 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. This is a band of microwaves where all the designs, everything will take place. And after that, you can see far infrared and after the infrared and after the visible light. So these are all coming into optics and all the things. So today I'm going to enhance and elaborate this microwave area. Where and all, uh, what are the important means, basic concepts in microwaves and what are the usages and uh, what are the components we can develop in the microwaves, where and all we can use. Generally we've read so many components like uh, amplifiers, filters, mixers, how, how these, can, these things can be uh, used and how this can be helpful. I will, uh, I will go to explain the next slides. And coming to that, there is a uh, uh, means frequency uh, nomenclature where we have to be very uh, rememberable. Those are the things like micro bands is starting from 
ultra high for UHF, 300 MHz at 300 GHz. But whereas if you see, any, uh, if you ask what is the satellite band, what is the uh, radio frequency band, and what is the uh, you know other band of frequencies like that. So we should uh, mention that these are all the other band of frequencies. L band, it is from 1 to 2 GHz. S band, it is from 2 to 4 GHz. C band, 4 to 8 GHz. X band, it is from 8 to 12. Like that, Q band, it is from 12 to 8. So it is up to F band up to, I mentioned, uh, that is up to 140 GHz. These are all the bands are uh, very important because the band will decide what kind of applications we are going to use. So this is all about uh, electromagnetic spectrum and uh, importance of uh, what are the frequency zones can be used for different, different applications. Coming to the transmission line, uh, there is a big difference between uh, normal uh, any circuit and uh, coming to the microwave transmission lines because the transmission line theory bridges the gap between field analysis and basic circuit theory and therefore it's a significant importance in the analysis of microwave circuits. It is not like uh, uh, normal uh, uh, jet parameters, impedance parameters and admittance parameters and ABCD parameters. If, if this transmission line theory will, uh, it has to be uh, uh, means properly seen where uh, the different kind of analysis because it is at high frequency. That's why the key difference between circuit theory and transmission line theory is electrical size. If you see any normal component that is very, very miniature length in the terms of if, the, if you take it low frequency, the component size is very less comparing to the wavelength of the low frequency. But if you go to increasing by day by day, like L band, S band, C band, like that, as the frequency is increasing, the operating wavelength is decreasing. Because of the operating wavelength is decreasing, that problems is going to start. So there, so many other uh, considerations has to be taken up so that uh, the electrical length is decreasing. So that's why uh, the physical dimensions of network are much smaller than the electrical wavelength, while Transmission lines may be a considerable fraction of wavelength. It is very fraction of wavelength. So you can't measure the, the parameters like voltages and currents easily. So transmission lines is a distributed parameter network. Distributed means it is in the terms of uh, transmission lines where voltages and currents can vary in magnitude and phase over its length because the length of the component is a fraction in the terms of wavelengths. While ordinary circuit analysis deals with lumper elements because it is uh, 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 less than the wavelength. So it is very easy to measure. If you see the equivalent circuit of a transmission line, if you uh, just, uh, that is a voltage, which is uh, in terms of length and time. And this is the uh, resistance in series and inductance in series. And this is the uh, transconductance in uh, shunt. And this is the capacitance in uh, shunt. So if you see, this is the voltage um, uh, incident on the transmission line, and this is the current carrying by the transmission line. So finally, we are getting the uh, VZ after a certain uh, distance. So in transmission lines, this is the distance, delta Z. Delta Z is a distance. If you see the over, uh, uh, over the distance, the voltage and current will vary and uh, fluctuate a lot because we are operating at high frequency. Coming to the transmission line continuation slide, this slows because as the electrical wavelength of a component is very much less than the operating wavelength, so the uh, electrical field transmission is not uh, that much easy because if it is transmitting in a small uh, length of the transmission line, what will happen? It will try to, it will not try to completely transmit, but it may trans uh, reflect back. That's why. Once lossless transmission line terminated in an arbitrary load impedance, let's say for example, if you take this uh, circuit, this is uh, arbitrary length. And the characteristic impedance, generally any uh, transmission line or any kind of thing, it has certain impedance. It is called the characteristic impedance, Z0. And this is the propagation constant. And if you see the little bit of uh, electromagnetic field and all the things, there is a uh, propagation constant always will be involved. So. And this is the length of the L. L is the length of the line. And this transmission line, this with this characteristic of the transmission line, is loaded with a 
load impedance of ZL. So, and it is carrying, and right now the voltage across this uh, transmission line is VL, and the current carrying by the transmission line is IL. So that the total voltage is, if you say that, because V0 plus is the incident voltage, and V0 minus is the reflected voltage, because it's a wave propagation. So then uh, the total voltage will be considered as V0 plus e power minus J beta plus V0 minus reflected wave into e power J propagation constant e power. So if you take the Z is zero, if the Z is zero, say for example, there is no transmission existing in an ideal case, then the load impedance will be V0 by I0, whereas V0 plus plus V0 minus by V0 plus uh, minus V0 minus into Z0. Finally, from this ideal condition, what we are going to derive is it is reflection coefficient. It called the magnitude of reflected voltage wave normalizes the amplitude of the incident wave. Means it is a ratio between the voltage reflected because you are going to measure the reflection coefficient. If you're not measuring the reflection coefficient, you don't know how much power is transmitted by the transmission line and how much power is reflected by the transmission line. So for that, the measurement of reflection coefficient is mandatory. So that's why the, the amplitude of the reflected voltage wave normalized to the amplitude of the incident voltage wave is defined as the voltage reflection coefficient, means that is gamma. Gamma is the reflected voltage, ratio between reflected voltage to the incident voltage. In other words, in impedance, load impedance minus the characteristic impedance of the transmission line by the total impedance, load and characteristic impedance. That gives the reflection coefficient. And at microwaves, this reflection coefficient is very, very important. In other ways, generally, uh, we will measure the VSWR, voltage standing wave ratio, where what are the VSWR level, acceptable VSWR level of the component to use in a system. So this gamma is indirectly uh, reflects to the voltage standing wave, VSWR, another uh, parameter of uh, reflected uh, voltage measurement. Coming to the another uh, uh, area of uh, discussion is microstrip line. Because say for example, if you take your mobile, in your mobile, if you open up, there is a PCB will be there, on PCB, there are so many electronic components will be placed on the PCB. Then only uh, so simple way, it requires the PCB and integration of components to the PCB. So for that purpose, you need a microstrip line. Microstrip line is one of the most popular types of planar transmission lines, primarily because it can be fabricated by PCB fabrication process and easily miniaturized and integrated with both passive and active micro devices. This is the biggest advantage of microstrip line. Without microstrip line or this kind of configurations, in the world, no electronic design can be happened. Even though if you take a MMIC, inside the MMIC, there is a microstrip line at the operating frequency or over the band of frequency. So the electrical live, live line, which is uh, designed to send the RF signal, that has to be traveled through microstrip line. So say, for example, if you take a two-layer PCB, generally two-layer, so this is the kind of uh, scenario we have to face. Because if you take two-layer, this is one layer, and this is another layer, top layer and bottom layer. And this is the dielectric constant of the PCB. So that, and this is the uh, distance between these two, thickness of the dielectric, thickness of the dielectric material. So, and this is the, uh, so we have to calculate what is the 50 ohm line impedance at that particular operating frequency to get the maximum power transfer or signal transmission through that uh, microstrip line. So generally in microstrip line, this ground plane always should be a, uh, this bottom plane always will be a ground plane because that is a uh, topology. So 
This is the basic uh, PCB, top and bottom two layer PCB architecture. And if you take this, generally we have seen, uh, already studied the EM theory, electromagnetic theory, which are the basics. There is two fields always in the universe. One is electric field and the one is magnetic field. These two are propagate along the uh, propagation of axis perpendicular. These two fields in orthogonal perpendicular direction. So if you see that one, this uh, 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 dot full line, black lines or E field, this is the uh, E field pattern. It means RF signal propagation on a microstrip line. And these dotted lines will show the uh, electric field. These two are very important because to, uh, if you see somewhere, I think in uh, EM field, uh, that um, uh, pointing theorem, uh, the maximum power transfer will be uh, uh, E bar and H bar. So these two fields propagation is compulsory in any uh, transmission line so that we will get the desired signal at the output. This is, this is microchip configuration. If you take if you, this is called, see, if you see, there are some fields uh, propagating from top of the material. This is the top of the material. And this is the width of the uh, live uh, RF signal carrying path. So that the E field is propagating to side of the this one, where there is no conductor here. There is no conductor. And the E field, this is, these are called also changing fields. Changing fields will be called in microwaves. In microstrips, fields will be there. Another way of uh, transmitting of signals with low loss and uh, a maximum transit power that is called coplanar waveguide configuration, CPW. Either, here, in microchip, what will happen? This is only the electrical parameter and there is no ground planes just beside that. There is no ground planes. There is only electrical parameter, electrical line is going on, which is carrying the RF signal. But whereas coming to the CPW, there is a ground field will be there, ground plane, immediate to that. It reduces the interferences and it reduces the radiation losses and all the things. These are all the advantages of CPW, coplanar waveguide. This is also PCB. Here, on just beside that uh, RF signal carrying line, we will place a ground, this side and this side. And always, if you see, uh, coming to practical real-time applications, there will be, uh, in PCB fabrication, always we have to place some wire holes be behind this, stitching wires. Those are called uh, PTH, plated through hole, to maintain the ground continuity from top and bottom. So if the... PTH is connected from top and bottom. So the ground grounding effect is very good. So in any PCB, always the grounding, uh, how much we do the uh, grounding of any PCB, the performance will be improved in any PCB design. I will come to the point later. So these are the different structures of uh, micro strip line, coplanar waveguide. And there is another way of uh, uh, propagation of RF signals. That is strip line. Strip line means there is a two planes is going on, and in the center the conductor will go between the two planes. The uh, the transmission line will go in the center. This is ground, and this is ground, and the center one only is a carrying. That is called strip line. It has some different applications. Wherein all uh, that uh, in multi layer RF structure, multi layer. Say for example, there are ten layers. One two, three, four, like that. In multi-layered RF structures, this strip line configuration we will use. Where and all, here you only, if you want to assemble so many passive components like small SMD capacitors, inductors, and resistors, and any other electronic devices, you have to use these configurations only. Whereas in strip line, you can't assemble that uh, uh, other devices on the, uh, in, in between the multi layers because it's a packed pack structure. Yeah, coming to the important uh, area of discussion, this is called scattering matrix. Say, for example, if you take a import device network, 
whatever it is, any uh, device or module or anything. And earlier, what I discussed, if you are going to feed a port of a microwave component or module, there is an incident wave, there is an incident wave, at the same time, there is a reflected wave. Similar way, if the module has multiple ports, multiple ports, port one, port two, port three, like that, up to n ports. So how you are going to measure the, what is the incident voltage and what is the reflected voltage at each port? That is called the scattering matrix related to the voltage waves incident on the ports to the reflected wave from the port. So once you are measuring one port and other port, all other ports to be terminated while doing the measurement of the scattering parameters. This is the scattering parameters matrix model. If you see this, so these are all, uh, uh, what are the reflected voltage? What we are measuring the scattering voltage, scattering parameters means we are measuring what are the reflected voltages. So that is called the reflected voltage of at each port will be obtained from uh, different ports of the scattering parameters to S112, S1N with the incident voltages. So that's called the reflected total voltage of the component is called scattering matrix into the incident voltage. And any electronic engineer who is working on microwave area, any component, anything, you, that engineer has to uh, be handy with the, this equipment, this is called vector network analyzer vector network analyzer. So you see there are two ports. This is port one and this is port two and this is port three and this is port four. So if you want to, uh, this is port one and this is port two, this is port three and this is port four. So in this, you're going to measure what is the input. You are transmitting a wave out of signal to the port and what are the reflections that this equipment will measure. and uh, in the output port, there are two ports. What is the uh, scattering parameters at S11 and what is the scattering parameters at S22? So those two ports can be measured simultaneously, this one. And using this equipment, it is a very high cost equipment. It will be in crores if you, because uh, the equipment is working at very high frequency. The cost of the equipment is very high. So using this one, we can measure uh, the gain over the band, you can measure the gain in spectrum analyzer also, but at a particular frequency, you can measure it. But using the vector network analyzer, if you see here, over the band of frequency, say for example, if you take from five to 10 giga something, what is the gain pattern? Gain, what is the gain of the component amplifier over the band? You can see it over the band at a time, at a time. And what are the input and output return losses? That is also you can measure. And one more parameter is there that is called isolation. Means, say for example, uh, uh, there is a port one and port two. Both are working, uh, you are working simultaneously. Isolation means, what is the leakage from one RF leakage from one port to other port? Else, if this is operating, what is the leakage from this port to that port? That isolation also, we have to measure. That is also very important parameter at microwaves because that isolation gives uh, gives you how much is the leakage so that how much rejection we have to apply and how much of uh, uh, noise floor is adding for that because isolation means what? It is an RF signal. RF signal leakage means it is a kind of signal with noise. That noise has to be eliminated for the better performance of any circuit. Coming to this uh, impedance matching, generally, uh, if you see uh, what is matching, generally we will discuss, I mean, uh, uh, I don't have good matching with that, yeah. I don't have good matching with that that person. And even in the marriages also, we will see, I didn't get good match here, that, that, that doesn't match to my uh, thinking like that. What is matching means, if you take the matching in friendship means, it is a long term, long term of the matching. Similar way, if you take in microwaves, matching means it improves the 
uh, losses and it improves the bandwidth also for uh, over a over wide bandwidth of and over uh, with low losses that is called matching say for example there is a uh, load and you have a different input impedance so in any network say for example if you take any uh, normal amplifier or power amplifier or loner amplifier the matching techniques are different but you have to match it until unless you are not matching with dead not to the load impedance you will not get the better performance that's why the matching networks also plays vital role in uh, to getting the better gain and uh, good bandwidth so that's why a few points are mentioned here maximum power is delivered when load is matched to the line and power loss in the fail line minimize that and impedance matching sensitive receive components like antenna so antenna has some impedance i think uh, ramkrishna sir also our uh, panelists also going to discuss in that so the matching of the output of any component especially in uh, either transmission from power amplifier to antenna and uh, in receiver from antenna to lna so this matching very important to optimize the signal to noise ratio signal to noise ratio everyone knows it what is yes and not signal to noise ratio means how much is the signal above the noise floor so that you will get very clear signal say for example if you take while uh, you are talking with the smartphones right in smartphones sometimes there are some cross talk will be happen you are trying to call to your friend but some other person is going to come to your band what is the reason there is a drop in signal to noise ratio it is not able to process within the limits it is that's why the cross talk will be happen so to proper communication for any kind of audio or video whatever it is we have to uh, provide good signal to noise ratio for further processing of for further digital processing or further uh, conversion of the signal so impedance matching in a power distribution network such as antenna array say for example i want to color uh 3 by 3 or 6 by 6 antenna array six elements in row and six elements in vertical so there also in array actually this area is a very important area in the future because uh this antenna array is going to eliminate so many mechanical uh like servo if you want to see the towards direction na so we generally in the old wheel techniques we are using uh, servos servo will mechanically rotate and it will get the direction But in present scenarios we can use a electronic scanning that is using antenna arrays so antenna arrays in the array say for example if you see if you want a uniform signal channel channels you have to match properly so that the amplitude and phase errors will be reduced phase also very very important if the signal phase is changing you will not get the proper direction every parameter important in high frequencies that's why matching is a critical parameter critical design aspect of any microwave engineer or any engineer in uh, designing any component so what are the factors that are important in selection of particular matching network so first of all complexity as with most engineer solutions the simplest design that satisfies the required specifications is generally preferable simpler matching network is usually cheaper smaller more reliable and low losses very complex design always the design has to think in this way complexity has to reduced complexity has to be reduced and as i discussed the matching for the long time of friendship we will see the matching are is the iske sath mere ko match nahi ho raha aise karke bolte na so that also you want to use the maximum frequency band to improve the bandwidth also we have to go for better by improving matching networks by using matching networks uh, we can improve the bandwidth of the any component coming to the uh some components which are all useful for the microwave uh, design like receivers or transmitters say for example 
I want uh, uh, one input, but I want to split it to two signals because two customers are asking for RLS two modules need the same power. There, which component we are going to use? We are going to use power divider. So it will be the power divider. It divides the power and gives to the two output to the different modules. So the T junction power divider is a simple three-port network that can be used for power division or power combining. So similar way. For example, one, one port to two ports, you can split the power. Same way, from two ports, the same frequency signal is coming. It can combine and give the signal. It, give, it, uh, it uh, doubles the power at uh, a common port. And it can be implemented virtually any type of transmission line medium. Uh, this, is, uh, this is called E-plane power divider. Generally, there are uh, two things we should know. Uh, low power applications and high power applications. Always, high power applications will be done mostly in kilowatts and uh, this one. It can be done with waveguides. There are waveguides. I think uh, people have seen in the electromagnetic lamps and all the things, waveguides, E-plane, H-plane, all the things are there. So the waveguides will be used for the high power applications. And uh, for low power applications with uh, assembly of integration of uh, active and passive components, we can use the uh, microstrip circuits. So that's why I'm putting these two are uh, waveguide power dividers and power combiners. And this is microstrip based power divider. This is one input and it splits the power into two outputs. In real time applications, in any major systems, say for example, you want to give only one RF signal and you want to split the two channels so that you put two stages of one to two. And again, the two, each one will split into two so that one to four, anything like that, Power splitting, generally for power splitting and power combining applications, we have to use the power divider. This is very, very simple, but very important component in uh, major systems. And this is another way is, uh, this uh, circuit depends on, uh, say for example, you want non-uniform power distribution, you can go for this kind of circuit. But whereas, this is the Wilkinson power divider, it is a different circuit, where it splits the power equally to the two output ports, two loads one input, two loads. So this is the Wilkinson power divider. Generally in uh, real-time applications, any systems, in any receivers or transmitters or any other circuits, you can use this. Uh, design is very simple and you can design and uh, you can uh, uh, use it in uh, receiver applications. Coming to another uh, uh, component in the transmitter or uh, this one, say for example, I have a very baseband signal in terms of kilo H or in terms of low mega H, but I want to uh, uh, send uh, this baseband signal to particular 10 giga H. This one mega H, I want to send it to 10.1 giga H. How it is possible? There you required a local oscillator. From low frequency to any uh, sending of high frequency, up conversion, that's called up conversion. There is a need of high stable local oscillator. This is, this is called a local oscillator. An oscillator is a nonlinear circuit that converts DC power to an AC waveform. Most RF oscillators provide sinusoidal outputs, which minimizes undesired harmonics and noise sidebands. Generally, this is the, this is the pattern of the signal. There, few parameters are very critical for any local oscillator. One thing is, uh, I think, see, uh, you have seen, uh, this is a signal and this is also a signal, okay? In signals, uh, in signals and systems, we will see the impulse signal, impulse signal. This is called impulse signal. This is ideal local oscillator signal, ideal, ideal condition. But in real estate, you will get a signal like this. In realistic, many oscillator, you will get the signal like this. That's what, there's a big difference between uh, uh, theory learning and practical generation of any oscillator. If you get this kind of uh, practical signal, so to use this as, to use this signal as a local oscillator for low frequency to high frequency up conversion, you should be bothered about two parameters. It's called phase noise. Yes. Phase noise means the signal will be not like this. The signal will be 
due to phase, the random, vari random variation of the say, signal, you will get some phase noise. So the phase noise should be as low as possible for your required application. It's called phase noise refers to the short term random fluctuation in the frequency or phase of an oscillator signal. We measured in dBc per H at a particular frequency offset. We can measure the phase noise at 10 kilo H or 100 kilo H or 1 mega H. It depends on how purity signal you want. So if you want a very pure signal, you have to measure very close to very close, very close to this that you will able to measure the phase noise of the signal. This parameter is very, very important. Because if you if you're not getting the good phase noise of the signal here at, at your desired offset, your required signal will be you will get in some undesired signal at the output. That's why this phase noise is very important. Fourier's in real time, so these are all the Fourier's at the end of the essay, some kind of spikes will come. Spikes on the edge of the sidebands of the signal. Those are called Fourier signals. <laughs> Fourier's also should be uh, Minus uh, means, say for example, the signal level you want at uh, 10 dB, 10, uh, 10 dB, so that that should be at minus 40 dB, 40 dB down, mm -hmm. 40 dB down or 40 dB down like that, the Fourier signals is required. And harmonic levels, generally, if you generate any uh, sinusoidal signal, uh, the basic fundamental uh, operation of the frequencies, F0, 2F0, 3F0, all the things will come. And those harmonic levels also that was as low as possible for depends on your application. This is this is called, so for example, this is this is called fixed local oscillator. Means you are going to generate one local oscillator only, one frequency. But in real time, so many applications, say for example, I want to sweep from uh, uh, say for example, one gigahertz to 10 gigahertz simultaneously. What is you're doing? So you but you want to generate a constant output frequency. There you required programmable oscillator. Programmable oscillator. That is called synthesizer. So programmable oscillators are called synthesizers where this will generate the uh, means you can continuously sweep. No need to uh, generate the fixed frequencies tune it. It will automatically programming. So now in them. So the programmable oscillator will have few parameters. What is the frequency speed you want to switch? Say for example, you want to generate one uh, 5 gigahertz and 5.2 gigahertz and 5.4 gigahertz like that. What is the switching speed you required for sweeping of the in electromagnetic space? And what is the frequency step size? How much step size you want? And uh, uh, synthesizer application based upon depends on uh, commercial and defense applications. What is the uh, how much uh, step size you are going to design? And what is the kind of uh, uh, spurious you required? What is the this one? All these things all coming into local oscillator area. But the parameters like phase noise and spurious and harmonic levels are very important in any local oscillator design. Coming to the another important uh, component in any receiver or transmitter that is called mixer. A mixer is a three-port device that uses a nonlinear or time varying element to achieve the desired frequency. Where it is a higher frequency, you can uh, upconvert the low frequency to high frequency, or you can downconvert from low to high, uh, high to low. So that is called two uh, actions it will do. One is upconversion. This is called upconversion mechanism. If you see this uh, block diagram, it is a local oscillator, and uh, you have a baseband frequency IF oscillator which is generating this, and these two will be mixed in a mixer, and you will generate. Uh, LO plus R minus FIF. So you are up converting. LO is high frequency. So for example, if you say this is 10 megahertz, so for example, 100 megahertz, you take 100 megahertz, and this is 10 gigahertz. So you will you, you will get either uh, uh, the 10.1 gigahertz or 9.9 uh, .9 gigahertz. This is so this is up conversion concept. Whereas coming to the down conversion, there is other uh, area of uh, uses. So R of local oscillator, and uh, this is R of R of signal, R of signal which you are going to receive from uh, free space, and this is a local oscillator, and uh, you are going to get from uh, high frequency to low frequency. Say for example, I want to down convert from uh, 10 gigahertz to 1 gigahertz, so that this is this is 1 gigahertz, and this is 10 gigahertz, 10 minus 1, that will be 9 gigahertz. So down conversion. 
down conversion both up conversion down conversion can be done this mixer especially why i am uh, uh, deliberating all these components means the applicability of the components we should know where is the application of the components how we can use that that is very important so there are few parameters this mixer while converting from low to high or high to low it has a natural loss the loss is called conversion loss for example if you have this signal is uh, around uh, uh, 20 dbm say for example to a 10 dbm you take 10 dbm 10 dbm this one and the mixer conversion loss is uh, 10 db so that you will get 0 db because the conversion loss is 10 db conversion loss will be there conversion we have to select a mixer which has low conversion loss and uh, what i said is no these are two ports and uh, isolation between two ports so between two these two ports where you want from which port to which port you want good isolation from this port to this port or from this port to this port like that so that isolation will improves the output signal and uh, intermodulation signal imd is general intermodulation when you will get uh, intermods you know say for example uh, this operating operating power level of local oscillator is 10 dbm okay if you increase the power level either either this this port or this port there is a safety measures always remember any electronic component cannot be used beyond the operating levels if you are operating the component beyond the operating levels either input or output so many intermods will generate because of the over driven concept so we, we have to operate the component within the prescribed power levels if you are over driving instead of uh, say for example 10 db if you are giving 15 dbm it will be more power is there so that intermodulations will come so that is also important and it should generate low noise it should not add any noise noise is a big chapter very important because noise will generate uh, noise will reduce the signal to noise ratio in transmitter uh, means okay in receiver there is a parameter i think most of the uh, uh, friends are heard about uh, noise figure noise figure so noise figure means what that is the output to signal to noise ratio to input snr so if your noise is adding by a component that component it doesn't have a good noise figure so noise effect is also important and image rejection image rejection also we have studied image rejection image should not be uh, passed by the mixer it has to eliminate the image yeah coming to uh, another uh, uh, means amplifier concept for which those are all can be used in any win this power amplifier is especially used in transmitters power amplifier so power amplifier has certain parameters i will explain one by one this one is called linear gain means linear gain means if any power is any component is there it has uh, Uh, say for example output by input that is called gain so linear gain without any over driving means within the linear zone what is the gain it will generate that is called linear gain that's what so for, before first i would like to uh, differentiate between what is the difference between normal amplifier and power amplifier in the name itself it is there to get more power we have to use power amplifier only in transmitter applications it cannot be used anywhere and if you come to uh, amplifier one amplifier with uh, 10 db gain or 15 db gain can be used in either in transmitter normal block uh, gain block amplifier that's called gain block amplifier or drive amplifier like that so that can be used either in uh, transmitter or in receiver gain block amplifier but whereas this power amplifier should be used only in transmitters that's what so th that's why for uh, uh, longer distance coverage we should use power amplifier with more power this is uh, this is called saturation gain saturation this has so many terms like called saturation gain or compression gain or power gain or large signal gain all nomenclatures are same because this gain say for example this linear gain uh, say for example you want to generate a 1 watt power from a power amplifier 
So for that, the linear gain and saturation gain are different. So for example, if you want to deliver one watt power, the linear gain should be one watt means one watt means 30 dBm. The linear gain should be 34 dBm or 33 dBm. Linear gain always higher than the saturation gain. So if you're driving the uh, power amplifier into compression, I think everybody has studied about one dB compression point. One dB compression point means if any amplifier is little more power is given, the gain where it drops to one dB, it is called one dB gain. Okay, one dB compression. So like that, that amplifier can be driven into one dB down or two dB down or three dB down where you will get the desired output. That is called saturation gain. Okay, so saturation gain always will be less than the linear gain. And uh, you, will, you will get the output power only while the power amplifier is operating in saturation gain mode. Believe this. So you will not get the power in linear gain. Linear gain you will not get. Once the power amplifier is driven into compression and saturation, you will get the output power. And the uh, input and output power losses, these are uh, related to matching, matching of input power amplifier, input to the power amplifier and output to the power amplifier. Both are important because power amplifier at high frequencies, managing the power is a very critical aspect. If your input is not good, your power will be reflected. So how you're going to transmit? You're not going to transmit. So input loss is very important. At the same time, where you're going to connect the power amplifier, you're going to connect the power amplifier to antenna. So that matching between output and output uh, return loss means output should be matched with the antenna impedance. Then only it will flow freely. Else in input, some disturbance will be there and output some disturbance will be there. So the power will be lost. That's why these input and output losses are very important. That's what power added efficiency. Okay. What is power added efficiency? See, every component requires the bias voltage, uh, drain voltage and drain current. So say for example, any power amplifier to generate one watt, any power amplifier is taking three watt. So you are generated from three, four watt, four watt to, uh, four watt is the DC power and you are generating one watt power. So the power added efficiency means output power by total DC power. So that is only 25% efficiency. That is called power added efficiency. So the PAE should be, uh, has to be improved, but always it depends on the uh, DC DC and output power, power added efficiency and the DC consumption also. How much how much uh, less DC current it is consuming? Because it's impure, because uh, if you see, uh, while you are uh, talking now, uh, our uh, friends will observe the phone is getting heating. What is the reason? Reason is, as you are transmitting the signal, it is continuously heating. So if a heating concept is reduced, why it is heating? Because of voltage and current. So the current and the DC consumption should be low so that we can reduce the heating effects. Those are called thermal effects. So the PAE and DC consumption are two important parameters to reduce the thermal dissipation, we can reduce it. And after that, this is called power dissipation. All these parameters are important of power amplifier. And coming to the driver amplifier, driver amplifier, uh, say for example, uh, I want I have a zero dBm signal and uh, the power amplifier requires 10 dB drive power, 10 dBm power. So that I need a between, uh, the, the driver amplifier we use just before the power amplifier. It is called driver amplifier. So it has a certain gain and it has good return losses so that it uh, the 0 dB signal will be amplified to 10 dBm and it will be given to the power amplifier for further uh, power generation. And this is important. These two mostly will be in uh, transmitter side we will use always. And coming to this low noise amplifier, order, I already mentioned that signal to noise ratio and noise figure. That should be always in receiver architecture. I will show you coming to the next slide. In receiver architecture, uh, immediate to the antenna, after the antenna, low noise amplifier will be there. Because 
it should not add more noise thermal noise to the signal so that the signal no signal to noise ratio will not get come down so low noise amplifier has to be emitted to the antenna to improve the signal to noise ratio and it is then for easy processing of the signal it has low noise gain the gain should be as maximum as possible in the designer so so that we will get the good noise figure uh, noise figure also because uh, uh, that is also important parameter and retail losses yes we will see there are uh, so many filter architectures like uh, butterworth filter chebyshev filter and elliptical filter and so many things we have seen but what is the where and all we can use the uh, filters how best we can use the filters so there are different types of filters will be there and especially these will be used to reject the unwanted signals sir samal ra garu transmitters and everywhere wherever you want uh, uh, to uh, pass the required bandwidth and eliminate the required signals it has to be used everywhere everywhere it would be used in real time applications say for example i want to uh, pass a signal only 10 gigahertz but in the vicinity there are 10.5 is there 11.2 is there so many things are there so that if i design a filter uh, 200 megahertz bandwidth center frequency from 9.9 to uh, 10.1 200 megahertz bandwidth and you put it so that only that signal will be passed and all other signals will be eliminated so filter is a very very critical component to improve the uh, rejection ratio and noise impact and uh, signal to noise ratio also that is very very important because if you are eliminating the other bands of the frequencies you are eliminating the noise you are eliminating the free space noise so that the it impacts to the sensitivity of the receiver i will discuss in the next slides sir speaker spe uh, speaker uh, samal rao garu receivers the basic Hello? receiver parameters are sir are you able to get me means uh, speaker the signal a receiver can process further and selectivity selectivity means what is the band of frequencies it will select for a particular frequency of operation that is selectivity and dynamic range dynamic range means uh, i mentioned now uh, there should be a uh, range of power levels where it can operate without disturbing to the output so uh, the range of signals where you can use that is called dynamic range yes aspika yeah yeah sir hello yeah sir speaker uh, samal rao garu hello sir uh, are you getting me i'm moderate hello uh, sir uh, voice is not audible brahmanity sir ah uh, sir actually your uh, time is up sorry you have to speed up this this thing jaindav sir can i continue hello hello sir okay 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 yeah yeah so that is a, a range of uh, power levels where that the uh, receiver will work properly that's called dynamic range sir samanda garu you have to speed up uh, your noise figure and uh, uh, i told i told him how much power it can withstand in the uh, real time scenario say for example there is a high power applications nearby it has to withstand in the power levels so uh, basically there are uh, tunable receivers in the tunable receivers if you see the block diagram there is a tunable filter before the rf amplifier or or this one and there is a tunable filter of that so we have to tune this so that we will get the required signal that one that is called tunable uh, receiver and uh, the disadvantage in this mechanism is it is a mechanical tuning and the poor selectivity because it has to operate over a band of frequencies uh, so that the uh, filter bandwidth should be more if the filter bandwidth is more then the selectivity will not be good that's why it is poor selectivity and the okay. difference here is because uh, we are directly uh, taking the rf signal high rf gain has to be used to improve the noise figure because of that what will happen you know r always is a costly domain so that you are increasing the cost of the module we have to see always the cost the size and the efficiency everything we have to consider so uh, because directly conversion is rf so the cost also will increase 
coming to the direct uh, conversion receiver it is called homodyne receiver here uh, the rf signal means it is it is a direct zero if conversion receiver that's called homodyne receiver so that so the here you see the rf signal and the elo signal both are same frequency so that, then we will get the zero if so that's why it has good selectivity good image rejection and uh, uh, it what will happen you know we are down converting into if so that we can amplify the if signal which is a low cost area so that the uh, cost of the module will come down and uh, it is simpler than others so uh, but only one thing to get the zero if this frequency has to match with low transitive frequency to get zero if that's why the stability of the local oscillator should be very high so that that is a disadvantage the getting a very high stability oscillator is uh, is a, uh, a disadvantage here you have to speed up sir you have to speed up your time is we will use the uh, rf signal different frequency and we will down convert it to some intermediate frequency so that we can further down convert and we can do more with the signal so here rf and if uh, rf and lvo are two different frequencies so that we will get some intermediate frequency at if level so because we are using we can use uh, some after uh, uh, lna we can use some filter so that it has good, uh, it has a high sensitivity because we are using filter before we are using here and good noise figure and it has good image rejection and uh, gain spread and rf base band because gain spread we can down convert at two three levels also we can down convert it uh, the disadvantage is uh, it requires little architecture complexity because uh, it has to down convert to certain intermediate stages so more down convert stages will be there uh, i would like to see uh, just to practically emphasize on few modules which are all developed in uh, dlrl if you see these are all uh, this is a mixer and this is a small filter and uh, to eliminate the intermodulations and all the things and it is a small amplifier and it is a switch actually so if you see i have uh, uh, assembled each and every component separately this is separate this is separate and the switch is separate if you see this is and i have evaluated each and every component separately so that i will finalize the power levels and all the things so that once you properly evaluate it individually then you can know what is the input power levels and ranges and uh, intermod levels and uh, uh, thermal uh, restrictions all the things after that we can this is individually evaluated after that it has integrated in a single module this is iteration 1 this is iteration 1 and iteration 2 here uh, we have to follow so many parameters like uh, proper assembly proper uh, uh, generating of uh, signals and uh, uh, pcb level also that i mentioned a uh, good pth and all the things so for better grounding effect we have to use uh, stitching pth pth wires for good grounding and this is another same thing in a single module we have developed all the components once individual evaluated we have uh, assembled the on a single module and this is the frequency l to k band it's a broad band gain is of 10 db and rf power of power from minus 40 to 0 dbm and dynamic range of 40 db noise figure of 12 db and harmonic sir minus at minus 40 db this is at uh, one part of down conversion and this is another uh, local oscillator generation this is the uh, this one this is the uh, architecture of local oscillator uh, for basic reference we have used and uh, this is used for airborne application and if you see uh, this is uh, this is the pll based this one and this is the tc expo temperature control uh, oscillator and these are a few regulators areas and all the things and uh, it is a programmable device by pll so that uh, we have used a microcontroller to program it so that's what parameters minus uh, phase noise i mentioned minus 95 dbc speed is minus 60 dbc and output power 10 plus or minus 1 and harmonics is minus 30 dbc these are the module develops at dlr and later anybody can uh, uh, this one for uh, i will explain further and uh, basically for uh, transmitters i have mentioned we will take the baseband signal and after that the signal has to be modulated either it is amplitude modulation or phase modulation or uh, uh, digital modulations like qpsk 504 qpsk and all the things after that the low frequency baseband signal will be upconverted using up converter using a mixer and local oscillator here and after that power divider because we have to generate more kilowatts of power 
that all the power uh, power high power amplifiers will generate the power and it again we are using these are this one these are power dividers and this is also power dividers like that so this is the concept of this one sir Uh, just yes, sir, completing. Yeah, yeah. Phone is chilling. Okay, na. Man, they get phone number late, guys. Sir, any questions from uh, audience and uh, friends? Sir, in chat box there are questions, sir. Sir, I think we'll take questions uh, after the next uh, panelist also. Presents his presentation. Yeah. Sir, uh, you, you, hello, Samal Ragaru. Hello, Samal Ragaru. Hello. 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 Uh, Samal Ragaru. 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 Samal so is able to hear, sir? Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, Samal Rao Garu, I have one question, sir. Samal Rao is not able to hear, sir. Just uh, okay, okay. Okay, sir. Uh, please go ahead. Ramakrishna, sir. Dr. Ramakrishna Garu. So kindly yeah. do your presentation, sir. Because okay, I, I think I have to uh, you know share the screen, uh, but he has to stop the oh, yes, I think uh, we don't have Janaki Ramgar phone number on the phone. Uh, yes, to disengage. No, no, uh, sir, I think uh, you have to okay. stop the presentation so that I can start sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can start. Ah, my audio outlet, Marco. Sir, you are able to see my screen, sir. We are, we are able to see your screen, sir. Is uh, okay. Please go ahead. Um, respected. Uh, yeah, respected engineer uh, Brahma Reddy Garu, uh, chairman uh, institution of engineers uh, Telangana state, uh, state, and um, engineer Janaki Ram Garu, chairman um, institution of engineer uh, Kothagudam uh, chapter, and uh, engineer uh, Karana Kumar Garu and uh, Srikanth Garu and other office bearers of uh, institution of. Uh, Engineers India. Good evening to and participants uh, and other uh, you know and panel member. Uh, good evening to all of you. Um, now uh, I would like to present uh, you know my talk on uh, recent advances in uh, millimeter wave uh, antennas. So um, by looking at uh, this uh, previous presentation, uh, he has uh, covered uh, transmission and uh, uh, certain aspects uh, related to the resonance. Actually, this particular domain uh, is related to the applied electromagnetics, though we say RF and microwave communication systems. In applied electromagnetics domain, uh, there are three subdivisions uh, related to transmission, resonance, and radiation. Uh, my talk uh, is uh, related to the radiation. Uh, previous uh, panelist, uh, uh, he has uh, covered uh, the transmission uh, portion as well as the uh, certain um, portion related to the resonance in the form of filters. And of course, in addition to that, he has also discussed about uh, microwave uh, uh, transmitter and uh, receiver chain. Coming to this, uh, my presentation. Yeah. Coming to this, uh, my uh, presentation, this uh, talk outline will be uh, introduction to this uh, millimeter wave technology and uh, applications and challenges and tools and measurement systems and uh, few uh, high performance millimeter wave antenna designs that uh, we have carried out at uh, our department, uh, Osman University and uh, conclusions. So this uh, particular millimeter uh, wave, this term uh, generally refers to the portion of electromagnetic spectrum uh, between uh, 30 and 300 gigahertz, corresponding to wavelength of uh, 10 to 1 mm. 
in electromagnetic uh, uh, spectrum, you will see uh, in between this uh, microwaves and uh, terahertz, uh, terahertz gap. So these are the uh, sub uh, band designations size for the IEEE Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Uh, so in the previous uh, discussion, we have seen uh, the designs uh, re uh, related to uh, till uh, Ka band till 40 gigahertz. This millimeter wave band, uh, it starts from uh, um, 40 gigahertz and above, but uh, in practice, we'll see uh, from uh, 27 uh, gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. So this is the band uh, that is related to this uh, millimeter wave. Then the, the same uh, detail uh, description is given as per the high uh, band designations, uh, L, S, C, X, and uh, K, U, and K, K, A. So what are the, uh, in the previous presentations, we have seen uh, all the uh, developments uh, uh, till uh, 40 gigahertz. So now uh, I'll be um, in focusing a certain uh, uh, design aspects uh, related to this uh, car band specifically, and uh, certain design aspects related to this uh, W band, uh, especially in, at 94 gigahertz. And coming to this, uh, um, mathematical uh, you know relation uh, point of view when you look at this uh, millimeter wave uh, frequencies um, these millimeter wave frequencies uh, naturally offers wide bandwidth uh, for example for five percent bandwidth when you look at at three gigahertz uh, it is uh, about 0 0.15 gigahertz but when you think at uh, 30 gigahertz the bandwidth goes to 1.5 gigahertz then coming to this antenna size with respect to this lambda by two dipole, when you look at at three gigahertz, it is uh, five centimeters. But uh, when you look at the same at uh, 30 gigahertz, uh, the size is uh, going to be reduced drastically, um, you know, five, like five millimeter. And this uh, millimeter wave spectrum is uh, open for exploration. So, sorry, just a minute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, then uh, this particular spectrum is uh, uh, open for still uh, for exploration. And uh, this millimeter uh, waves, the main uh, disadvantage is uh, the path losses are high. Why? Because uh, it is uh, directly proportional to the frequency. When you look at this expression for a path loss is uh, as frequency increases, this loss also going to be uh, increases because this lambda is in the denominator. And uh, atmospheric and uh, rain oh, no. Yeah, uh, sir, tell me, sir, you are able to hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, please tell me, sir. Yeah, you are able to hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this atmospheric and rain attenuation is also high. So to meet uh, um, these uh, particular disadvantages uh, we have with respect to this antenna, uh, we have to look at uh, the antennas uh, uh, which offers a high gain. Yeah, um, this is the um, uh, one, um, you know, a reference chart uh, that is, uh, you know, provided uh, by these authors uh, related to this overview of uh, millimeter wave communications for uh, uh, fifth generation uh, wireless network with a focus on uh, propagation models. So this uh, graph shows uh, attenuation uh, versus uh, frequency. Uh, so as uh, you know, uh, frequency um, you know increases, uh, the attenuation at uh, certain bands uh, uh, you know will be increases, and uh, certain frequency band uh, there will be less attenuation. So that's the reason in the application point of view. So where there is a less uh, you know attenuation, uh, those bands uh, we basically target. Uh, so here uh, in this figure, you can see at Cobb band, uh, so there's a little attenuation and then uh, uh, 94 gigahertz at W band, uh, the attenuation is uh, high. The remaining uh, uh, frequencies, uh, you know, there are uh, frequency points like 22 gigahertz and uh, uh, 60 gigahertz and 120 and 183. There are uh, high attenuation. Uh, deep, uh, this is based upon the atmospheric effects and uh, the available uh, 
uh, O2 and H2O content in the atmosphere at uh, those frequencies will influence to have uh, high absorption so that we'll find uh, more attenuation. And uh, here with respect to this uh, millimeter wave frequencies, uh, uh, as per the rainfall, the rainfall rate uh, as frequency as just now mentioned as frequency increases, we have seen uh, uh, the path loss is going to be increases. And also with respect to the rainfall rate, also the attenuation level is going to be uh, increases. So this is the uh, paper published by uh, Rappaport, uh, I think uh, he's a very well-known uh, author uh, in this uh, particular uh, domain. Uh, overall, uh, um, uh, so far with the so far discussions, uh, we can uh, summarize the advantages of this uh, millimeter uh, wave frequencies has uh, uh, it will have a secure communication in the presence of enemy threats uh, in the form of jamming resistance and uh, LPI and reliable and stable operations under adverse uh, operational uh, conditions. And uh, using this millimeter wave frequencies, we can have uh, the devices with uh, small size as Lambda is small. And uh, with that, uh, we can also have a, a less weight. And uh, with respect to this industry terminology, uh, swap C means size is less and weight is less and power uh, is also less. Uh, the cost uh, will be high. That's the reason I highlighted uh, with the red color. And because of this uh, small size and uh, lightweight transport, uh, transportability is also uh, good as an advantage and uh, rapid uh, deployment is also possible and larger bandwidth availability at these frequencies and uh, small hand in them. Then coming to the disadvantages, as we have seen this high atmospheric attenuation and high um, losses will be there due to the rain and poor uh, DC to RF conversion efficiency and uh, the components available availability at uh, these uh, frequencies uh, uh, is little uh, difficult to get and uh, the frequency license spectrum is uh, getting is also little uh, difficult this is a disadvantage and uh, there will be a potential radiation hazards i think all we are uh, these days we are seeing the literature about these uh, 5g frequencies and upcoming other 6g and so on uh, their uh, radiation hazards. This is an, a disadvantage and uh, the cost of uh, this uh, particular devices uh, uh, will be high. These are the uh, disadvantages. And then applications, we have a plenty of applications. Uh, uh, we can uh, see in uh, the satellite communication, automotive applications, uh, radar applications, and uh, uh, 5G uh, communications uh, and body, body scanning means biomedical applications and virtual reality and high definition uh, video applications, all such kind of applications we have with this. Uh, it is possible uh, with uh, millimeter uh, waves. So the same thing I mentioned uh, when you look at this uh, vehicle to wave, uh, vehicle to vehicle communication uh, that is possible with uh, millimeter wave frequencies, smart driving. Uh, with the concept of uh, smart cell concept, uh, we can have increased data rates and radar applications. Uh, uh, earlier uh, replacing uh, you know, wires, uh, we can uh, replace with this uh, wireless, that's possible. And uh, medical applications, body scanners and uh, multimedia world, uh, we have applications like uh, virtual reality. These days, uh, we are finding uh, much about uh, this particular uh, zone, virtual reality headsets and so on. And satellite communications uh, will be used in aerospace and aircraft applications. Uh, so to find attention uh, with respect to the applications of this uh, millimeter waves, I just uh, pre prepared some uh, few slides uh, uh, to tell about uh, the same what all I mentioned. This is the uh, you know uh, vehicle to vehicle uh, communication we can establish using this millimeters waves and then um, high data rates you look at this uh, the various generations the corresponding uh, speed uh, 1g, uh, 1g 2g and 3g 4g and 5g we are talking about uh, 20 gigabits per second it's all possible with this uh, millimeter wave frequencies and um, earlier uh, we used to have uh, this wide um, uh, applications now we can replace uh, with the wireless uh, uh, you know, by having radars, uh, millimeter wave radars uh, with small size. And uh, this is another uh, application, uh, you know, this using this, we can uh, 
also uh, measure uh, the you know water levels so this is actually done by one of our uh, student as uh, you know as the part of his uh, startup uh, he developed and installed in uh, various places of uh, india especially in all uh, rivers uh, to see the um, you know uh, water level water level indicator so it is a millimeter wave radar uh, here a very small device that you can able to see here and um, there are uh, then automotive um, uh, applications like autonomous vehicles these days we are talking so we can uh, have a uh, automotive radar installed uh, in the autonomous uh, vehicle uh, at 74 uh, gigahertz um, so that uh, we can uh, have a driverless vehicle is possible and um, the other applications uh, you know full body scanner and all it is uh, possible with this uh, millimeter view application so this is the uh, one kind of uh, you know virtual reality in the multimedia application then uh, coming to this uh, aerospace and uh, uh, satellite applications uh, we have uh, several uh, applications with uh, millimeter wave frequencies and various products that uh, you know radars and uh, micro links uh, ew systems and uh, electronic countermeasure and counter countermeasures uh, products and proximity fuse and altimeters all these days you know we are finding much uh, in this particular uh, frequencies and uh, fuse uh, millimeter wave uh, fuse uh, is we are finding much applications i mean applications in the electronic warfare uh, with the millimeter waves we can have a better strike efficiency of a fuse and operational flexibility is possible and uh, safety and reliability is also high so by looking at these applications uh, this um, mil military defense and aerospace mda is one of the leading uh, sectors of uh, millimeter wave technology market it was estimated to be uh, 15.05 billion um, in 2020 and dollars billion in 2020 and expected to reach at uh, uh, 300 uh, billion dollars by 2025 uh, growing at a compound annual growth rate uh, of 59.81 percent this is uh, the literature uh, that we have seen this is the growth of the market there's reason the all companies uh, are working in this uh, particular uh, domain radar and satellite communication are the main applications in this uh, seg segment the acceptance of millimeter wave technologies is at large in uh, uh, military defense and uh, aerospace sector because they have uh, you know uh, much more applications uh, with this uh, millimeter wave technology it also has uh, one of the highest growth rates among uh, amongst all sectors in millimeter wave technology then uh, coming to this uh, antennas uh, perspective so this my presentation uh, basically focus about uh, this antennas that are uh, um, you know the designed uh, at millimeter uh, waves what are the the requirements and what are the fabrication technologies are available at present so as a part of requirements uh, you know antenna should have uh, wide bandwidth it is possible with millimeter frequencies high gain so we have to use the different uh, uh, techniques to uh, you know uh, achieve the high gain and uh, low cross polarization and low side lobe level high front to back ratio these are the uh, major uh, requirements any antenna designer will target uh, they wanted to design uh, their antennas at uh, millimeter wave frequencies and at present uh, the fabrication uh, uh, techniques are available uh, are pcb um, technology and substrate integrated wave technology it is a uh, compromised uh, uh, technology between uh, you know conventional and uh, um, printed circuit, circuit board technology and there is another fabrication technology uh, is called LTCC low temperature uh, co fired ceramic uh, technologies uh, these days we are finding uh, uh, these millimeter wave uh, devices uh, fabricated with this LTCC and as well as uh, since the uh, the size of the um, design or device is very small so the fabrication accuracy matters much uh, in the performance 
So these days, uh, people are using much uh, 3D printed uh, technology for the development of this millimeter uh, devices. The challenges that we have uh, um, here uh, with respect to the simulation, I config, uh, configuration uh, systems required uh, for I mean, uh, to save the computational time. You know, so that season uh, these days we are the industries we are using the uh, uh, you know uh, RAM size of uh, you know more two fifty six GB and so on. Uh, because of that uh, RAM size and hard disk size, uh, so we can save uh, the uh, computation design simulation time or computational time to design uh, the things at uh, millimeter wave frequencies. And uh, losses in the design, you know, we have to consider the losses uh, as per the literature that I've uh, shown uh, the frequencies, the corresponding losses. To compensate uh, those losses, we have to plan uh, the design. And uh, the physical realization, uh, the material uh, we have to choose and proper fabrication methodology we have to use and uh, suitable connectors uh, that we have to use uh, uh, to get the required performance. And uh, testing uh, point of view, in the previous panelists also shown uh, this VNA. So I also mentioned as the uh, you know frequency of operation of that VNA, this increases the cost also increases especially for this uh, antenna uh, radiation performance when you wanted to test we, we require a anechoic chamber uh, okay so as here also as the frequency uh, operation increases then uh, definitely the corresponding uh, um, you know chamber um, so cost as well as the related uh, equipments uh, also the increases so this is one challenge and then uh, uh, this particular technology it is not uh, very new but uh, you know uh, people have demonstrated uh, our own uh, indian scientist uh, uh, sir uh, jagdish chandra bose uh, he demonstrated uh, this work uh, you know 1895 uh, the uh, jc bose demonstrated the existence of millimeter waves at uh, uh, 60 gigahertz you know 1895 only this uh, uh, is demonstrated and then later uh, you know the, there is not uh, much work uh, reported and then uh, in 80s again um, um, found uh, uh, some attention uh, because of this uh, uh, paper literature consideration for millimeter wave printed antennas by david m poser is also a popular uh, author in this uh, particular rf and microwave domain uh, he explained theoretically performance of printed antennas at millimeter wave frequencies using various uh, substrates. And then uh, after that, uh, uh, very uh, recently, the another famous uh, author in this uh, wireless communication uh, domain, uh, Rappaport, uh, he has uh, explained the significance of millimeter waves uh, with advantages, applications, and prob propagation challenges. Uh, so initially, uh, during my presentation, I shown some. Uh, um, you know, slides uh, related to this uh, attenuation uh, effect uh, as frequency increases, uh, how, it is, how it will be uh, with, this, uh, his, uh, with his literature. And as well as as the rain rate increases at this particular frequency, how attenuation increases and all he demonstrated. And then after that, uh, by, uh, with, by taking that as a reference and then designers are taking care uh, um, their designs uh, uh, using those uh, uh, existing or available literatures. Then uh, coming to this, uh, uh, my talk, I just wanted to give some kind of a case studies uh, that what we have uh, uh, developed at uh, our Usman University. At our Usman University, we have a uh, one uh, center of excellence in this particular uh, microengineering called CEME, Center for Excellence in Microengineering. So as a part of that center, we have all uh, uh, you know, computational uh, facilities, especially with uh, uh, all uh, popular electromagnetic uh, simulation software such as uh, ANSYS HFSS and uh, CST Microwave Studio and uh, Keysight uh, Advanced Design Systems uh, with uh, System View and AWR uh, Microwave Office with uh, VSS uh, Visual System Simulator and we have a GLAND IE3D, of course, now with the mental graphics, uh, the same IE3D. And uh, we have uh, Sonet. Uh, what all I am mentioning? These are all our uh, uh, popular electromagnetic simulation softwares. At our center, we have all uh, popular electromagnetic uh, simulation uh, uh, softwares uh, with the license. 
and also we have a test facilities uh, uh, especially uh, the network analyzer and uh, spectrum analyzer these two devices are very important as far as the rf and micro engineer is concerned it uh, uh, it can be treated as a uh, two eyes for a human being how two eyes you know serve the purpose of uh, doing the things for a rf and micro engineer engineer also this network analyzer and spectrum analyzer will do the same so we have a facility till 20 gigahertz uh, and uh, uh, with these existing facilities and uh, also by taking the help of uh, local uh, uh, R&D organizations. So we have developed uh, certain uh, designs uh, and uh, um, at this millimeter wave frequencies. I just uh, quickly uh, go through about uh, these designs. Uh, we have designed a low silo level uh, slotted SIW array antenna and uh, DL polarized horn antenna. Uh, as a part of that, uh, before getting into this actual uh, work i just shown this uh, we have developed some uh, microchip to uh, siw slotted uh, uh, waveguide antenna and uh, we have developed this dl polarized horn antenna and cascadian reflector uh, uh, at uh, w band uh, 94 gigahertz and uh, switched beam array antenna at millimeter wave frequencies and uh, low profile beam tilting antenna and uh, substrate indicated waveguide uh, tapered slot antenna. So these are the uh, few uh, uh, designs we have uh, uh, developed, uh, in, uh, fabricated and uh, tested and validated uh, the performance. So we have used uh, these facilities, ANSYS, HFSS, uh, high frequency structure simulator and uh, CST micro studio and Keysight ADS uh, to design them. And uh, we have tested it using with our uh, network analyzer and then uh, and CAC chamber uh, from the other R and D organization. So, uh, the, in all the designs, uh, primarily we have used the SIW technology. Uh, this uh, SIW technology is a compromised uh, technology between, uh, uh, you know, this uh, planar transmission line, uh, such as the uh, microstrip line, uh, strip line, coplanar waveguide. Uh, what uh, you know, our uh, previous uh, panel. Uh, speaker uh, has mentioned about uh, these advantages and disadvantages of this particular line and uh, conventional our waveguide. So this SIW is a compromised uh, thing. What are the advantages that we have with uh, this planar transmission line such as microstrip line, strip line, as well as this waveguide? The, those advantages we can have uh, in a compromised way with this SIW technology. This is an SIW technology. The advantage uh, that I mentioned here is it is more compact and uh, lighter than waveguide. Uh, its power handling capability is higher than microstrip. It offers a lower loss than microstrip. And uh, microstrip is a planar transmission line. A proper designing of SIW leads to negligible uh, radiation losses. So prim primarily, you know, it will have uh, um, the uh, slots um, like this and uh, spacing between uh, uh, the holes, actually. Uh, other speaker has mentioned uh, uh, PTH uh, in the same manner. Here uh, we have uh, the spacing uh, uh, between them uh, from center to center is uh, this P is mentioned and uh, the diameter of each hole is uh, D and height of this each hole is H. So uh, the diameter is uh, chosen in such a way uh, that uh, it should be less than uh, uh, lambda g by 8 to avoid the band gap effects. Lambda g is the uh, wavelength uh, inside the guide. And uh, the spacing uh, between the two consequent uh, holes uh, to uh, avoid the effects that uh, confinement of the electromagnetic field, its value should be uh, less than uh, t should be less than 2d. So uh, there are uh, all these equations and all, uh, you know, uh, you know, since uh, from academic side, I'm, I used to present uh, this, uh, but since uh, we short of time, I'll be skipping. These are the well-known uh, uh, formulas uh, that we use to design uh, uh, this kind of a, uh, you know, SIW antennas. Uh, it is available in the literature well. Uh, this is the cutoff frequency and uh, the, uh, width of the substrate indicated waveguide is calculated like this. All such kind of equations I'll be I mean, skipping now. Finally, I wanted to show the uh, the product uh, how it is designed. So we have designed within a, a substrate uh, called RT-Duride 5880 from Rogers Corporation with uh, 
uh, epsilon r is 2.2 and the thickness is 10 mil. 10 mil mean uh, 0.254 uh, thickness. So first, initially, uh, we have uh, just a transmission line, one transmission line uh, we have designed first. Uh, these are the specifications. Uh, I just wanted to uh, show the photographs uh, much uh, instead uh, to basically to showcase uh, uh, some kind of a confidence. Uh, probably there will be students in this uh, presentation addition to these working engineers. Um, so I just wanted to show this is the transmission line. Uh, that is placed in a uh, jig uh, for testing. And uh, we have published, uh, since as an academician, what is the work that we do? We do publish in the flagship conferences uh, and as well as uh, some repeated journals in this RF and microwave domain. So we have published uh, in 2019 a conference that happened in this particular domain at NIT Tiruchi. So we have a, a good match with this simulated and measured uh, results. Uh, we, uh, um, you know, it is serving well as a transmission line. It can have a with almost zero dB uh, loss uh, and uh, the return loss uh, for the simulated and measured uh, is almost close, but there is a slight deviation because of uh, the test jig that we have used uh, for a measured case, uh, we have found slight uh, deviation. And then after that, uh, we have converted the transmission line by shorting uh, at this end and uh, putting some uh, two slots uh, uh, it is uh, serving as an antenna. Um, so this is a you know, one class two antenna, two slots uh, working in a two antenna elements. So uh, this is the uh, radiation pattern uh, of uh, that, but uh, one class two slotted uh, SIWRA uh, antenna. Uh, we can see the gain. Uh, we have sound uh, point five that we have achieved in. Uh, uh, the planes that we have mentioned, XZ plane as well as the YZ plane. Uh, then we have extended this work to one class two and uh, later on uh, for this one class four. Uh, I just wanted to summarize uh, the final results so that uh, uh, we have extended this work for, uh, um, you know, uh, with the power divider. So, uh, to summarize this uh, particular this work that we have done, uh, um, you know, as uh, uh, one class two we have extended to one class four uh, with the divider and without divider. What I wanted to highlight from this uh, particular uh, discussion is, uh, you look at this uh, in a YZ plane, uh, the half hour beam width. Uh, to to have a more gain, uh, we have to reduce this uh, half hour beam width uh, so that we can have a good directivity. So. Uh, that uh, we have attained uh, here uh, with the power divider, one class four slot uh, with power divider uh, 26.82, so that uh, we have uh, uh, had a very good uh, directivity. And then uh, uh, we have uh, used the different uh, distributions like uniform distribution and uh, Taylor distribution. For that, uh, well established uh, equations are there. From that, we have calculated and then uh, we have uh, shown that uh, with the uh, Chebyshev distribution, we can uh, increase the uh, some in the side lobe level um, much uh, compared to the uniform distribution. Uh, we have seen in the co-polarized good uh, uh, cross pole that we have attained. This is a normalized pattern for one class eight, and uh, this is the uh, final um, um, uh, one class eight uh, slotted SAWRA antenna that. Uh, we have developed, this is the top view and uh, uh, this is the bottom view. We have published in this progress in electromagnetic research. And uh, we have tested uh, at uh, Astra Micro Product Limited. Um, uh, this is an AMPL from AMPL Hyderabad. Um, so we have a good match with the simulation and uh, measure results. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, com com we are compared with uniform and uh, Chebyshev distribution, uh, simulated and measures, uh, good match. And then uh, another uh, thing that we have tried is uh, uh, we try to increase the uh, mutual um, you know, uh, coupling. Uh, okay, so these are the two antennas uh, uh, that we have taken. I just uh, wanted to uh, show like this. Yeah, so these are the two antennas, uh, but there is a coupling between these two patches because they are very side by side. Uh, what we did uh, using this SIW, we have placed SIW uh, 
substrate integrated uh, waveguide uh, in between these two. Uh, so uh, by keeping this uh, SIW here, uh, so there is no mutual uh, coupling between uh, this uh, primary patch and secondary patch. So it is uh, started uh, functioning, uh, you know, in an isolated way. So this is actually also required when uh, more uh, elements, uh, antenna elements are there uh, side by side in a, sm a small space. Uh, so with this uh, uh, SIW technology, it is also possible to improve the uh, mutual coupling between these antenna elements. So for that, all these calculations, etc., mathematical calculations uh, for this design, I just skipped and just I wanted to show only this concept. Uh, then uh, we have used the 3D printing technology that we sir, have available. Yeah. Sir, tell me, sir. Uh, sir, sir, tell me, sir. Any, uh, how many case studies are there, sir? Just uh, two more studies, sir. I'll be winding up in uh, just five minutes, sir. Five minutes yeah. time, I'll Please. be winding up. Yes. This is good. So this is actually another design uh, that we did. Uh, so as all you are aware about this magic tea, the, the magic that is associated with the magic tea is uh, uh, this year, port one and port two are collinear arms uh, in magic tea are isolated. Uh, so this is the magic associated with this magic tea. So we have just modified uh, this magic tea. Uh, we brought uh, this port two to here, this side. Uh, with, with this motivation, we have designed uh, one... Uh, uh, antenna, uh, you know, this is the one with planges also we have designed in HFSS and uh, we got achieved uh, a good isolation. Uh, you look at this, when you feed at port 1, uh, the it is uh, signal is only traveling to this port. Uh, it is not going to this port. I mean, these two ports are isolated. Uh, you know, we have post, uh, we have given one metallic post here to maintain to uh, attain this isolation. But when you uh, feed a signal here, uh, it is coming uh, to this, it is not coming to this. So we have demonstrated uh, at this uh, millimeter uh, uh, wave frequencies. You look at this uh, frequency of operation uh, from 24 to uh, 33 gigahertz. And then uh, you know this is the fabricated antenna that uh, with uh, 3D printing technology. At Usman University, we also have a, uh, 3D printing uh, prototype machine. So with that, uh, we have uh, um, developed uh, uh, that and uh, tested uh, with the help of uh, AMPL as well as this uh, uh, DRD, DRDO lab, uh, Hyderabad, DLRL. And um, then uh, there's another uh, case study just I wanted to highlight at uh, W band. So this work that we have done for uh, Cassegrain reflector antenna at 94 gigahertz, uh, the same concept what we have uh, just uh, now explained uh, with the 3D printing technology at uh, millimeter wave frequency 28 gigahertz. The same thing we have extended to at uh, 94 gigahertz. Uh, the same thing is demonstrated when you feed it to port 1 and um, it is only connected to the port 2. When you feed it port 2 here, port 3. So we have fabricated this also. Um, then uh, we attained a good performance. Uh, radiation performance. Uh, so uh, there's a good match between uh, simulation and uh, measure result. Then another thing uh, with the uh, Butler matrix that, uh, so this is the well-known concept, uh, probably those who are uh, actually working in this, uh, um, you know, uh, RF and micro domain, all they know about this Butler matrix and Newland matrix much. Uh, so with this uh, concept also, uh, I just wanted to show, uh, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, butter matrix, uh, how it is uh, giving, providing the different phases and all. Also, we have uh, demonstrated uh, in our lab uh, at millimeter wave frequencies. Then there is another simple uh, uh, dipole uh, rectangular loop, uh, um, in, uh, dipole uh, antenna array that uh, we recently had done with uh, uh, three directors uh, with the uh, support of the the Butler matrix feeding uh, with four ports. This is what we have developed. Uh, and um, so these are uh, four uh, dipole antenna array and these are the directors. Uh, with that, uh, we have improved the uh, gain by keeping uh, more directors, you know, naturally increase the gain. And we attend a good isolation and good gain. And these are the different, uh, 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 how it is uh, the beam is shifting uh, 
uh, with as per the port excitation and also well demonstrated uh, then the last one uh, that uh, we have developed uh, this uh, particular antenna uh, it operating from 37 to 40 gigahertz uh, with the bandwidth of 3 gigahertz um, and the gain is 6 db and of course uh, vswr is all the time is 2 is to 1 it's a beam tilting antenna uh, so uh, the concept uh, here is uh, uh, here the three directors are there uh, we have kept the switches here uh, when uh, switch is uh, uh, on here uh, that time only with this director only will be active so that beam will be tilted in this direction when the switch is uh, off this side uh, then the beam will be tilted this side and uh, when uh, these two switches are in uh, on condition uh, that time uh, you know this won't act as a director but when the two switch switches are in off condition uh, then the beam uh, is in the uh, same direction is not going to tilt a left and left. So this beam tilting uh, application also another important. Then another work that we have done with this um, uh, antipodal um, uh, slot antenna or SIW antenna, this we have fabricated and uh, tested and published this work. Uh, so this is what uh, uh, that uh, the work that we have carried, it, uh, carried out at our Center for Excellence in Microengineering uh, related to this millimeter wave uh, uh, technology and of course this is the kind to summarize uh, with respect to the uh, the designs uh, the related to our case studies uh, uh, so with this and uh, these are uh, the few references uh, uh, that we have uh, used for our designs and as well as initially also I just uh, given a, a brief introduction to this millimeter wave technology and its applications and uh, the challenges of uh, uh, design challenges uh, uh, and fabrication challenges of millimeter wave antennas. All those things I uh, basically taken from these references that I mentioned uh, till 23 and uh, reported. Um, yeah, these are the uh, references, of course. Uh, so with this, uh, I wanted to thank uh, the all the participants and I would like to answer uh, I mean, uh, questions, if at all you have uh, related to this millimeter wave technology. So as I mentioned, uh, especially this uh, military defense and aerospace spect uh, sector, they are uh, using much uh, these particular uh, applications. So uh, I, I have done uh, with my presentation, sir. Now I would like to take, uh, if there are any questions from parts. Thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Ramakrishna Garu, and also, uh, Samal Rao, sir, and uh, so they are really uh, a wonderful presentation with uh, the practically and also the design part, and so nicely explained about the entire microwave receivers and transmission, how it happens, how the spectrum has taken place, how the micro siblings works, how the amplifiers and other um, uh, devices which are the part of the receivers and uh, transmitters uh, of the microwave or communication and also satellite other parameters all these things have been explained by samal rao garu the great sir great great presentation i i would definitely say maybe those who are not uh, much uh, um, aware of the mic, uh, microwave engineering may feel a little bit uh, this thing because of the lot of parameters and other uh, equations. But excellent, sir. Excellent. Excellent presentation and excellent content. And it's uh, really very weak, as we can say, because of the time I'm uh, cutting short of the my... Uh, otherwise, I would also like to say half an hour for the... Uh, that uh, <laughs> And the milliwave uh millimeter wave technology and really sir dr ramakrishna garu i would like to join you i am associated with the c and company and their iit hyderabad if uh, if possible i will join yes. you yes sure sir actually presently i am heading the department yes sir uh, i am also uh, expert in uh, design aspects of the antenna okay. uh, other things so we will definitely work together in our uh, institution at telangana state center also I'm very happy that the Kottagudam State Center has given you and me also an opportunity to come uh, today, each other known familiar. And it's really wonderful because the way you uh, put things and, uh, and I think you have done some good research in uh, uh, millimeter wave technology, but especially the antenna and other uh, 
techniques what we have used and definitely we'll uh, be in touch sir and i would like to sure. have another good session uh, in uh, telangana state center also with i think in jointly with the kotagudam so that i want to encourage the kotagudam more and more uh, thank you sir thank you very much sir this one and thank you very much and if anybody has got questions and please uh, come out sir participants any has got any questions sir karan kumar garu shrikant ha uh, yes sir in the chat box there are some few questions yes, let us sign this from iit karakpur yes. uh, it's all like to continue yeah any questions Sir, there are few questions in the chat box, sir. Okay, then uh, I'm not able to see your chat box. So let me see. Yeah, uh, I think uh, related to my talk, uh, sir, kindly suggest some study materials related to Butler matrix. Uh, I think uh, in my presentations, I actually what all uh, that I uh, basically discussed, uh, where mm -hmm. I collected uh, that literature references as a part of references I provided. Yeah, I think, sir, Sri Panda Srikant, Joint Honorary Secretary, raised a hand. He would like to uh, put some question. Panda ji? No, no, sir, that is not. Uh, that is... Uh... No, there is a hand reason, uh, yeah. reason and that. Is okay, you... anyway, put the chat box there, please put the questions. We will forward to oh. them and answer the... the sir, 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 sir. One sir, question is... And uh, they can give their mail or mobile number, we will... Sir, one question, one question from chat box. It is, yeah. Why filters are extremely please, important please. component? Why filters are extremely important components? Yeah. Uh, coming to filters, uh, because uh, uh, filters... We uh, eliminate the unwanted frequencies. If you uh, pass the uh, uh, unwanted signals, which are uh, very close and side by to the desired signal, so you will not uh, get the proper uh, down conversion, up conversion, and you will not get the desired signal. It will be masked. So, so that's, that's why, why you have to eliminate the unwanted signals. That's why filters will be used. Uh, the turn. And uh, filters will be uh, just if you're going to go for good selectivity and improve on the sensitivity that has to be used before for the loaner sample. So, uh, there uh, you are getting to improve the sensitivity means the minimum signal the receiver can detect. So, like that, those are uh, uh, important components in the receiver part. <coughs> Any other question? So there is some question in the question answer box. Uh, yeah. For Ramakrishna, sir. Uh, mm, yeah, tell uh, why SIW antenna is showing bad thermal performance? Yeah. SIW, no, sir. Why, yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So actually, that, you know, it is uh, the uh, whole PTH uh, uh, thing is that, no, sir, it is involved. A lot of uh, Holes are there, uh, holes will be there as per the size of that unit. Huh? So, yes. uh, because of that, uh, P, uh, PTH, uh, more number of naturally, more number of uh, holes are there, definitely it will uh, uh, increase the you know, thermal power. So, that is the one. But we should uh, use the appropriate uh, design considerations to come out from that issue. Uh, there is a that is a disadvantage of this particular technology. Okay, sir. There, there is a question from Sanjay Kumar. Why the name is microwave, where it is, uh, wavelength is not in, uh, it is in micrometer. Why it is called microwave? So actually, this uh, particular terminology, you know, very recently came like, you know, again, this earlier, uh, this particular zone, entire one is called, like, you look at this uh, uh, RIGI textbook, uh, as per the IEEE band designations, uh, 300 megahertz and above, entire thing is called microwaves that time. Okay. Very old uh, literature says. Uh -huh. Then uh, subsequently, these band designations again, uh, you know, like a millimeter wave and uh, terahertz and all this came very recently. Mm -hmm. As per that old lit literature, you know, compared to that uh, radio, uh, earlier kilohertz range of frequencies, uh, these wavelengths are uh, very small. So that mm -hmm. time uh, they uh, call uh, 
microwaves that's the reason uh, even hyperplia also now they are calling this entire spectrum as rf spectrum instead of saying uh, uh, bifurcating like a microwave or a millimeter and so on they are making okay. in a generalized way rf uh, spectrum okay. or band so as okay. per the old terminology it came that uh, you know compared yes, yes, to yes, those yes. Uh, frequencies yes. is um, very yes, small sir. wavelength yes, thank you sir and this question is for shamal rao uh, what yeah. is what is role of communication networks in defense what is the role of communication uh, networks yeah communication networks uh, it is coming to the telemetry application basically okay. if you want to jam any kind of uh, communication uh, in the battlefield so we have to maintain the uh, tracking signal first of all that receiver will receive the signal so that uh, from uh, which direction the signal is coming uh, communication signal and uh, then we have to jam the uh, enemy signal which yes. communication device it is transmitting so those things has to be uh, located using the communication network okay. generally it is uh, it is for uh, telemetry applications it will be used okay sir so for ramkrishna sir this is a uh, new question Why, is. China, why Chinese and European companies are leading in 5G antenna communication? Okay. Mm. Um, oh, Chinese and uh, I mean European. Korean, uh, okay. those people, na? Uh, ah, yeah. Yes. So actually, uh, there uh, they have a you know <clears throat> uh, this uh, fabrication, uh, especially uh, the yeah. facilities, fab facilities. They are very ahead. This Korean. Uh, japan and uh, these uh, uh, spaces so uh, that reason uh, they are uh, much power we are talking 5g but already <laughs> they are uh, 6g devices also they are uh, already started yeah. working on that so another uh, because of question. that facilities yeah. uh, uh, compared to our country they are ahead all other countries in fact uh, so, so. because of yeah. that only they are ahead than the other countries sir last question sir why 5g technology is so expensive Mm, yeah expensive means in the very beginning no uh, especially uh, the beginning the things will looks like you know expensive once uh, the technology is uh, proven and then uh, finalized uh, then uh, naturally the uh, things will come out uh, within uh, less expensive so at the initial stage when you look at it will be in expensive mode Uh, once uh, it started uh, you know producing uh, the things uh, delivering the things then you know, naturally this is a related to market kind of a situation you know related to technology actually okay sir thank you sir thank you very much there are a lot of questions but we have asked sir yes sir so okay sir thank, thank you thank you srikanth garu uh, i requesting the dr uh, p srikanth please uh, give the vote of thanks to the uh, today um, this uh, webinar please sir thank you sir thank you very much uh, on behalf of kottagudam local chapter i would like to thank uh, uh, iei head office and uh, uh, chairman telangana state brahma reddy sir and uh, uh, chairman kottagudam local ia chapter uh, sri janakiramaya garu and uh, our general secretary karuna kumar sir and our esteemed panelist number 1 uh, sri shamal rao DRDO Hyderabad scientist E and uh, professor Ramakrishna sir associate professor department of uh, EC I heartfully thankful to you sir thank you very much and also I, I also thank uh, Chakravarti sir for um, for for hosting all this program thank you very much and also I thank uh, uh, participants also Thank you, sir. Now I will start the national anthem. Uh, please uh, follow this.
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I have now concluded the webinar. Thank you, sir. 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 With the permission of chair, I am ending the webinar. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.